Mr. Matthew, the last question is from my brother Bülent. Yes, Bülent. Mr. Johnson, uh, last question is, you know, in recent year, especially in after uh, 2010-11, there are some changes in the world, uh, especially in the uh, Arabic world. Uh, with the recent developments, uh, the old socialist dictatorships are tumbling, and the oppressive rulers such as Mubarak, Gaddafi, and Saddam were toppled. The Islamic world is aspiring for democracy, freedom, and this is actually in the core of Islam. How can we educate, educate Muslims on this true understanding of Islam, which also embraces Christians and Jews as brothers and sisters as well? What do you think the source of education should be for this? How do you think we could educate all the people? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last part. Uh, how do you think we can educate the Muslims the true understanding of Islam? You know, it's so you know it's going to embrace the Christians and uh, Jews. Mm. Well, I think one way, and I'm not one to really uh, speak to that as much as is to the West, uh, but one way certainly is through dialoguing. And one thing I do, and and I'll plug it, is with uh, a, organ a great organization called Salia, uh, S O L I Y A dot net, and what they do is cross cultural dialogues with. Um, uh, students from the West and students from the Middle East, and I'm right in the middle of the semester now as one of the facilitators, and and it's just it's just amazing just to see how much similarities there really are, and and I think everybody after the eight weeks is so amazed to learn that you know we you know from the West or whether from the um, Islamic world that we really have a lot in common, and many of them is a respect for human rights and democracy, uh, all kinds of various freedoms. You know this Bush adage that they hate us because of our freedom. I mean I think it's been thoroughly discredited. And I think, like you mentioned, the Arab Spring was the, was the main um, event that discredited that. And, and, and I think it's clear that people want to um, come out of their shells and, and embrace, you know, if the West has some great values that, that, the, um, that the East might want to get a hold of, that they're willing to, to try, you know, willing to topple dictators. Um, I was in Egypt a year before Mubarak fell. It seemed impossible that he would fall. He seemed very strong, and and yeah. it's just amazing how quickly ideas can spread. Exactly. And, Nobody and would accept this. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was not expected at all. He's going to tumble down. Right, and and I just think the world's changing in communications. You know, like the way we're able to t communicate now through Skype. I mean, things like this are are making it possible for people to to see um, uh, cultures for what they are without traveling there, even if they don't have the money to go themselves and to um, learn new ideas. I mean, the internet is revolutionizing the way we uh, think and act and, and engage. And, and there's a lot of challenges, sure, but I, I think that, that um, there's certainly a lot to um, be hopeful about. And, and I just hope that, that um, things continue, though, on a peaceful trajectory when it comes to change. I think, I think another uh, you know, way to uh, educate Muslims are to remove bigotry from the, from the you know, uh, Islamic you know, cultures. Because people, if they really, truly believe in Islam and they, if they learn the core of Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then, then they will understand that you know, all his life and the Quran, it states, you know, the, uh, it states the brotherhood with Christians and you know, Jewish people. But the, somehow the bigotry is taught ar among the among the culture, and then people are taught, you know, they they are our enemies. People are all our only the, you know, Muslims should be come together, but they should be from their own sect and so. What do you think, Jerry? Um, well, there's uh, a lot that can be said on the, on this actually, because there are a lot of traditions and sentimentality and romanticism uh, that go along with uh, the Muslim world. And a lot of the tradition, what we find, and, and I've had this discussion several times, is that we have people that are they're taught that they have to, to read the Quran in Arabic or they, or they have to go to the mosque and listen to lectures or, or teachings in Arabic, and they don't understand the language. I mean, they may not even be able to read Arabic, but they try to read the Quran in Arabic. Yeah. Uh, and what happens when this, when this goes on is then they're taught by one person or two people. And if those people... Uh, are not teaching true Islam, then what you have is a tradition of teaching people uh, opinion and ideas rather than what is actually in the Quran. Exactly. Uh, and this is a, and you guys know this too, this is a major problem in a lot of places yes. uh, in the Middle East. 
uh, because tradition will trump actually education in a lot of places and it is very uh, very fervent discussion that goes on in a lot of places over there and you know um, when you get into tradition there are people that are um, they're being um, basically uh, killed and tortured and everything else over tradition uh, because they have you know we have people that will not or they will teach but we have people that don't understand what they're learning so one of the big things we have there, I think, is trying to move away from these education, this, this education of it, or tradition. That you have to learn in a certain way. You have to do this a certain way or it's not true. Uh, I have in front of me, I have a, uh, a transcribed uh, Quran that is in English and in Arabic. Um, and I can read it and understand it. And if I have questions, I can ask somebody. But I don't have to go to somebody and say, can you teach me what this means? Uh, because I can read it right there. I can look things up. I can, you know, and yes. I, I have ways to, to find out exactly what the Quran says. And I also, you know, we need to educate people in history and science and art and math, uh, microbiology. You know, there's so many things that people need to learn to really understand these religions, uh, whether it be Juda Judaism, Christian, or, or Islam. Um, people need to be able to have that education to be able to learn for themselves without having to be taught everything. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this is you know, you know, from this show we can really conclude that you know people should be you know educated for the aim of the real Quran and the 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 uh, you know life of Prophet Muhammad and uh, so that you know people will be more uh, with love to each other, with respect to each other, and uh, with they will brotherly and sisterly. Will, they will be all love. Mr. Matthew, uh, thank you for attending our show. Uh, this was all our questions. We would like to see you again in, in the coming shows. Uh, we really enjoyed the time with you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you as well. Jerry, it was nice to see you again. See you next week. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to see you guys too. And a very pleasure, nice pleasure to meet you, Mr. Johnson. Maybe someday I can see you on my radio shows. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, dear guests, uh, thank you for everything and for uh, you know attending to our uh, show. Uh, this is the end of our program.